become a household word is Mr. H.W. Hoover, Jr., President and Chairman of the Board of the Hoover Company. This is his message. By a wonderful process of evolution, the Hoover family, as it's now known, includes your own family. The story I want to tell is how this pleasant merger evolved and where we as a company are headed. So first, let's go back, way back to the turn of the century when the latest Marvel was moving pictures. As an added attraction, the vacuum cleaner was beginning to challenge the broom. This early pedal type used manpower instead of horsepower. It came out in 1893. The treadle drove a suction fan and a brush roll so that the dust was swept up and sucked up at the same time. It was much better at reducing the wasteland than reducing the dust. At this time, at the turn of the century, my grandfather owned a leather factory in North Canton, Ohio. The business had been in his family for nearly a hundred years, making saddles and harnesses, what you might call a cash and carriage business. Some people in those days even called it a growth industry. But the automobile was increasingly heard from, and it cast a shadow over the saddlery business. So my family looked around for another product. Something for the home. This was it. Model O. The first Hoover. In everything but name, that is. In 1908, when the machine came out, the firm was called the Electric Suction Sweeper Company. This model was plenty heavy, but that shows it had everything in it. Positive agitation wasn't invented yet. That came later and really put the company in business. Our first ad had the modern touch, offering a 10-day free trial in the home. The man behind this idea was H.W. Hoover Sr. He was full-time salesman and part-time everything else in a one-man show. He would call on a local merchant and invite him along to see how easy it was to demonstrate the machine to a housewife. In that way, he sold a machine and a franchise at the same time. In 1911, Less than three years after the company started, Windsor, Ontario had a Hoover assembly plant. And the following year, sales were made to Norway, France, Russia, Belgium, Holland, and Scotland. His thinking was international from the beginning. The teens of this century were a time of rising incomes. H.W. Hoover Sr.'s main thought was to free women from household drudgery. But women had deeper freedoms in mind, like the right to vote. They wanted their fair share of participation outside the home because of new leisure gained in the home. Some people said, next thing you know, they'll want to even smoke cigars. Long live liberation. the one millionth Hoover was sold, model number 541. It was the first to assume the shape of the well-known Hoovers of today. At about this time, too. So get the wonderful new light Hoover with its easily connected air cleaning attachments. It beats as it sweeps as it cleans. That slogan brought Hoover and an eager market into happy conjunction. Meanwhile, Hoover International Sales Conventions took place every year. Men who made sales records came to Hoover Camp in North Canton, Ohio, to relax, exchange ideas, and develop a Hoover spirit. 
and the program always included a big parade. People have always been Hoover's most important product. Creative people, especially, are the lifeblood of any company. At these camp get-togethers, it was part-time play and part-time training. About the year 1931, Paravale in England was the scene of hectic construction. This plant has become the center of an export trade to five continents. When the plant came into being in 1932, the Hoover model of the day was number 750, the first Hoover to introduce headlights. It brought in a new slogan. It shows you the dirt you never knew you had. The company hoped the light would also reveal that it picked up the dirt you never knew you had. Then, suddenly, our products changed for what people began to call the duration. We made helmet liners, energizers, fuses, life belt inflators. In Ohio, a memorable event was the visit for the duration of 85 children from Britain. These are sons and daughters of people in Hoover Limited. After the war, the tempo quickened. A new plant at Bertha Tidville, Wales, expanded our company into washing machines. This plant was built in Australia, at Meadowbank in New South Wales, to make and assemble washers, cleaners, and polishers. The headquarters plant in North Canton resumed the manufacture of floor cleaners and widened its already varied line of appliances. Not far from this plant in North Canton is the one at Hamilton, Ontario, manufacturing the same products as are made in the States, plus some defense items. Among the newest additions to our company is our factory at Isando in South Africa. It began operations in 1963. I've had a chance to visit many countries in which we do business. I'd like to visit more. It's always a great experience. Not long ago, I toured our plant at Merthyr Tidville in Wales. It's hard to believe that 15 years ago, this was wasteland. There were mountains of slag where the factory now stands. Merthyr was mining country past tense. Few mines were operating, and few people had jobs. We have bought land across the street for a warehouse that's going to be as spacious as the plant itself. More than 3,000 people work here. They're purchasing power, creating a new life for the surrounding community. More than 5 million washing machines have been built here, enough to supply the whole British market as well as countries overseas. Washing machines tested here are shipped out to five continents. Merthyr is the largest manufacturer in the world of washing machines for export. Three out of every four washing machines exported from the United Kingdom 
are Hoovers, made at Merthyr Tydville. Quite a few are shipped to the United States. In other words, trade is the lifeblood of the place. When you meet business people in Wales, the talk inevitably turns to trade, as it did at my meeting with Mrs. Williams, the mayor of Merthyr Tydville, and Lord Brecon, Minister of State for Welsh Affairs. It's a pet theme of mine that, if anything will iron out international differences, trade will. I feel that what we need in this world are more ways to bring people together. Trade is such a way.